guys, welcome to Pixie Nettery, I am Pixie. Hopefully you started the year fully prepared, because I started it quite intensively, emotionally and physically. First of all, I got my monetization here on YouTube, huge thanks to every one of you for that. Secondly, I'm overwhelmed by positive feedbacks about my previous videos, guys. It is crazy to get so much output about my work in that short period of time. Also, some life changes happened, good and bad and all at once. I had to settle all that in my brain, catch a chill wave. And let's start my first video of 2022. Today I want to show you my work process on one very special commission doll. From the deepest swamp forest, from the farthest fairylands, the child of magic and lush greenery, little pine tree protector Lisha. Inspired by this art, Slavic folklore and forests of Ukraine, I will create a tiny pine cone fairy for the loving heart of her owner. I'm starting with preparing all patterns by simply cutting them out of various fabrics I thoroughly picked for this doll. I'm trying to keep a variety of textures and types of fabrics quite wide, so it allows me to create a unique and complex look for my creations. The most common fabric I usually use in my works is simple cotton. It is non-stretchy and very easy to process fabric, so I highly recommend it if you are only starting in doll clothes making. Some of you were asking where I do get my patterns, so the answer is I'm making them myself. Usually individually for each doll, because no matter how many years I'm doing customs, there is always something new to create. So the easiest way for me to get the look I want is to create it by myself. Some of my patterns I have for sale at my Etsy shop, so if you are interested in getting them, I recommend you to check them out. There are not many patterns, but it is still something. In future I plan to actually expand the assortment, but I just have not much time now. Those are quite a pain in the bum to transfer digitally. Let me know in the comments, maybe you have some specific requirements about what patterns you want to buy. Back to our doll. As you can see, main colors resonate with something swampish, forestish, maybe even with bugs and camo. For a base doll, I picked this body from AliExpress and made a bodysuit mock-up. Starting sewing with merging two body pieces in the front seam. Sewing all by the hands as usual. This piece would be made out of dark green synthetic. A small tip on how to make knot when you're end stitching. Make a small loop, stick needle into that and make the last stitch. And here it is, small and neat. Attaching sleeves into sockets. I tried to figure out this kind of garment for quite some time and came up with reversed seams on the sleeves. Maybe there is another way to make it, but I'm perfectly good with this one too. Attaching second row of sleeves for second pair of hands. Closing the neck lateral sides. The base of the bodysuit is almost ready and it looks funny. Before moving to the legs, I'm sewing up the back seam. And only now stitching up the leg inner seam. Turn everything out and let's look on how it looks. I'd say it's perfect. Into the back opening let's attach thin velcro. Both halves I'm stitching into the back opening carefully and hemming edges as well. Neck has its own mini velcro, so the flexibility is saved. Small jump in the past to see how I tried to decorate sleeves with knitting thread. Horrifically shedding if you pull the thread, 
so I need to find a solution for this issue now. I just want my sleeves to look like bug legs. Is it that much? Of course not. I will seal fibers on place with stripe of water-based glue and fix a thread on top of it. When the glue is dry, the bottom part of the thread smudged with glue would harden as well. So no shading guaranteed. Okay, almost no shading. Drop the fuzzy cuff around the sleeve and cut it. Make a few stitches. Sticking fibers I trim with scissors and get cute little cuffs. For feet I picked poulains, medieval pointy shoes, and starting them with soles. First of all, attach aluminum wire in the center. Thereby I would be able to curve them into the right shape. For soles to sit, I'm making stretchy covers that would be pulled on the feet like socks. These pulleins are quite tall, so I'm making lining that would stick outside when I turn the upper part like a cuff. The lining turned out, so now I just press it with heat iron. Fold shoe in half and sew up the back seam. Into shoe I'm sticking the sole with wire armature. These transparent triangles are future Poulain's noses, that I will bend and stick into a shoe. With stitches I'm fixing details, so they wouldn't open. Lighter and pencil are tools for shaping these noses from a flat to rounded. placing them into the tips of the shoe and it looks strange, I know. With pliers I bend wire inside and shape tips into the right form. Out of foam I'm making soft lining for soles. Those would give some volume to the bottom part of Poulain's. Glue it on. Prepped sole glue onto the shoe. I'm using fast drying polymer glue. In process, I decided that ribbon belts would add to the look of these shoes. Almost ready. Let's add some pendants. Also soles I stitched to the shoe in the process. Here we go, planes completed. On top of the bodysuit I will wear a kilted sundress, because without it doll has too many similarities with Christmas elf. Sew up and iron the front seam. Also I would leave openings in the front and on the back for the petite coat to show up. Making pair of straps by folding and ironing. Sew up side darts on the skirt to take away some bulkiness from it. With iron hem all edges. Also, all of it was previously processed with glue. Gather skirt into folds. Make cuts on the collar and flatten with iron as well. Process all edges similarly. With light green cotton I'm making a petite coat and sewing up the front seam. Iron again. And sew up pair of darts again. Well, making ruffles is kind of my thing, so let's do it for this doll too. This process might be in some way tedious, so I skipped it here. If you want to learn how to do it, check my Cinderella doll video. Time to assemble petite coat with the dress and move next. Pairs of straps attaching onto its place. 
And here we are, with all fitted and adjusted. Time to decorate. On the waist I put brown PU belt. Hook closure on the back. And let's add extra thingies to make everything dance. With a few bits, acorn and other stuff I will make some kind of side bags with useful items. Which maybe our fairy might use in her travels. Some of these items reminded me of something that could be found in the forest. Like bird egg, sub droplet, acorn might be container for food, little golden bits like golden crumbs were fished out from the river and might be used by Alicia as coins in local fairy shops. The little golden cage contains a small light stones and is very handy when it's dark. On the back of the dress I attach some tails. Hem edges with iron. And life those tails with some folding. And another knot tip. Look closely at how to make knot with one hand. Crank the same step with fuzzy edges but for the dress. Fuzzalicious! Repeat pendants for the dress tails to add some unity to the look. The grand hat is coming. It has quite of a shape here. Never made anything like it before, but I like the results a lot. All petals I sew up between each other to create the shape of a chestnut. The process is not fast, so skip to the cape part. Sewing up the darts. By the way, it is lining part of the hat. The lining is here to provide better sliding on the head, because the face layer is out of the felting fabric. All steps are repeated, and I'm connecting the lining part with the face part of the head and sew it up. Turn everything out and assemble a hat with a cape. With pins I secure both pieces on the place. I will tell you a little secret. It's wrong place. And sew it up. Sometimes it just happens. Center slit to the side a bit and in the end you got crooked piece. But at this point I didn't know it. So I made the perfection of a stitch for you to observe. And the miserable downfall of hopes when you have to snip snip those and redo this step again. This time without pins, because I haven't all time in the world, alright? Ah oh, yes. Now it is just like it should be. Funny shape, but oh you know. It's getting even funnier now. With these asymmetrical stripes I will create kind of pine comb texture. Look shape. You will see. Sewing it one by one, moving to the top. Told ya! Pixelated Chewbacca in all its glory. Sew up a golden snap to the neck. Honestly, the most hilarious hat I made so far. Look at that! Oh my god! Mesmerizing and sits well, uh-huh! We are not done here yet. Let's add little sparks of joy to this hat. At this point, I don't know, it is stump, it is pine cone or medieval tiled rooftop, me likey. The wings, it is a fairy, so she needs wings. My fairy is living in the wild swamp, 
so teensy weensy thin foil of wings are not her thing. My fairy has thick kitten buck wings, and they are shaped like a moss wings, because I like moss silhouette more. You know it's better to have thick wings when you're flying between sticking branches and big enough to be able to cover the back and to uplift the body. So I made three layered wings out of white felt, sparkly net and shiny green brocade. Do you know what can be better than one pair of wings? Two pairs, but this one without brocade. I'm stitching net to the felt and that's it. Connect the pair of wings together with a few solid stitches. It would play the role of a joint, so wings can be slightly spread to the sides. Look at that, look nice, warm and sturdy. A little shabby and easy removable. I added some jewelry because why not, and a loop for hook on which these wings would sit. But we're jumping to the face up, because it is time already, and for the base I took Monster High Cleo with her sharp and beautiful features. Why is this doll special? Remember I told it at the beginning of this video? So let me tell you. I'm just jumping out of my pants when I receive commissions like this one. That doll is commissioned by my friend Andrew to his very, very special person. To his boyfriend! As always, Andrew gave me all freedom to dive into my imaginarium to create the doll which represents a swamp. Swamp fairy in particular. Not that creepy squelching swamp, but this, you know, breath of the wild. And you know, I really love forests. I really like them because when I grew up, it was a common thing for me to visit forests with my family. I love the crunchy feeling of pine needles under my feet. Spiky dense greenery with barely visible sky blue clothes about the head. Observing dried out footprints of local furry inhabitants. Coming out to the small pond and looking far, far away, feeling the beating chill on the cheeks because the sun went down and it is time to come home. And I remembered even more when I was planning this doll. Equipped with my memories, I decided that she had to wear really warm attire, to not get cold at night, but also be sturdy and wear something armor-like to be able to protect herself and her beloved ones. She had to have full bags on her belt for any life turn she might face in the wild, so she had to be magical and cozy. I wanted to make a special doll that can represent everything that a relationship between two people can be. So here is she. I wish you guys love. Warm and caring, like Lisha's outfit. Love, full of crystal honesty and respect, like bags on her waist. Love, cozy and real, like her main idea, forest and nature. Love, white and comprehensive love. Also, I want to thank you, Andrew, for all support you are giving me. It means even more than you can imagine. I wish you the best. And you know who is also inspiration for this doll? It is Leshi. The character of Slavic fairy tales folklore. The spirit who is actually a guardian of the forest himself. He is one of the oldest and one of the most well known characters in Slavic fairy tales. Leshi is often depicted as a simple, cute old man, but also as a creature with old man's face features, with skin out of the tree bark, covered in leaves and anything forest related. But actually, the look of Leshi is quite blurry. Because you just can imagine ants, giant tree creatures from Lord of the Rings, of how they are everyone looks different. So here is the same thing. Leshe can change his shape and become small like a little mushroom, or become big and so he can even touch the tree tops. It is that because Leshe is the owner of the forest, so he has to be able to absorb all of his kingdom corners. Leshe casts no shadow, he is inhumanly strong. He knows all forest animals' languages and can manipulate the wind. He is caring about the forest and actually he has emotions as every human has. He is not a super positive character, but not a totally negative, just like us. It is known that Leshe can make people lost in the forest for fun, or if they were bad to the forest. But also he can help those and lead them out to the right path. So now you know.
and I don't know if it is already 10k subs on my channel, but you guys, oh my god, it is one of my small dreams coming true just right this moment, for real. And let me tell you about it. I started my doll journey with my friend whilst I was at university. And from the first touch to the doll I understood that it is what I actually can do, and what's most important, what I like. I always wanted to step over the barrier of 10k on any accounts with my dolls that I started on social media, but any of that doesn't reach goal. And obviously because it wasn't my format, or I wasn't in the right place. Also maybe because in the current realities of some platforms it is an unachievable goal for me. I just can't spend my time any longer on the creativity drain in places. Doll art is mostly a slow art. It requires time, precision and hell a ton of learning. So here I am, doing what I always wanted to do. With so much of you here with me, I can't be grateful enough to you and more proud of my work now. Hopefully this feeling would last. Join me in my happiness and let's see where it comes. Wait a bit to see the final result of this doll. Subscribe and welcome to Pixinatory. I hope you liked this video and already left a cheering comment under it to show me your big thanks for my hard work. It really motivates me and makes me happy. I hope this video was informative or relaxing for you. I don't mind even if you are asleep on it. So I wish you also have a nice and productive sleepy time to recover your energy for a new day. Thank you guys for watching my vid today. Suggest any characters you'd like to see in my next videos. Who knows, maybe one day I will make your idea into a custom doll. So now I'm saying to you, have a great day guys. Bye! And for a base I took Monster High Cleo Denial with... Denial? Cleo Denial. <laughs>